Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to build this organic C shell form with twisting roll shape right in the middle for decoration with Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, so we are going to take a look on this shell. Uh, form first. We're going to build a shell form first and then using the same curve and we're going to flow this decor uh, decorative uh, element on the top. But uh, I always as well um, recommend my student not to draw the nature form yourself. It's always recommend that you trace from the real picture. So, so we're going to use the picture command and we can bring in any of the picture that you like just because a lot of the time they come in to really restrict a uh, proportion and it will be much beautiful when you trace over. So let's lock this one and I wanted to um, create some sort of a section there. So let's do something like this. Uh, maybe right here, this one section and I just want to draw the line there. So I have something to snap on later on. Something like this. This one is something like this. And you will say, well, this is lines curve by why you draw a straight line. Well. It's in the perspective, so do the best judgment you have. You can draw the curve if you want to. All right, so basically, man, this might be too tilted. I want something like this. Just cut it over there. All right, and then the next thing is we can trace over. Make sure your near is on. So what we wanted to do now is follow this shape, kind of giving a general shape like this to snapping into the line that we have. Maybe this line that I have. It may be out too much, so I'm going to bring in like this. And then from here, we can use the arc or you can trace over. So I simply want to come in over here using the arc, start, finish and moving out and going star, finish, moving out and like this continue to finish in those uh, body shape. Uh, this might be too big of the arc. So I'm going to trace over, coming over something like this and get it close. And by the way, this is more like a, in the perspective. So uh, like something like this, I might just need to change it a little bit and come back with the arc tool, gonna snap in here and here, coming over here. like this and snapping endpoint to near. And again, right here, I may want to trace it. The key is you need to make sure all the endpoint is touching. All right, so now we no longer need this image. Let's go ahead to hide it. So this is what we have there. If you're looking at the perspective, you're going to notice they are completely flat. Right. So we need to make some sort of the um, bump there and depends on how bump you like to have. So I simply going to make another arc that's going to be somewhere about here. It's about that much bump there. And then we need to have this arc to place on every point there, every section over there. So we're going to use the transform. And then we're going to use the orange to point. And I actually want the copy equal yes, scale equal 3D. And this is the reference one, reference two. We're going to target here to here, here to here. And make sure you're snapping all of them in the end point. So here to here and the very last one here to here. All right. So now you can see that we have the depth. Now, if you do want to change it, say this one need to be coming up a little bit more, you want them to be more bump, then you can edit from there. Okay. So now we have this arc and this, and guess what command I'm going to use? Yes. It's the sweep two. So let's go ahead to the sweep two. You got rail one, rail two. You're going to sweep this arc to this arc. All right. So then we get that very bottom body going from here to here this curve to this curve going from here to here this curve to this curve 
And some people might ask me like, what's the difference between choosing the curve or surface age? At this case, they are the same, right? Because the curve is the one that we use end up with a uh, surface age. So in this case, they are the same. So either one will be fine. And I'm going to pick up this one. And the very last one, we could, we need to have a rail. So um, two rail instead of just one rail. So I'm going to split with the point about right there. So then we can do the surface again with the sweep two, rail one, rail two. And you pick up this one as the curve and it's going to end up something like this. Okay, so now we got this shape over there and we can simply just join all of them together. So once you join, how are you going to make it into the solid? Oh, by the way, on the bottom is open right there. So I may want to draw another straight line going from this point to this point and making a surface with the command surface from two, three, or four edges curve. And because we got two curve, curve one, curve two and we hit enter so that's how we get that button close all right so now we have this one that's joined with everybody there and if you are going to make this into the hollow there are a few ways that you can do and I, I'm going to show all of them to you first you can do the offset surface Depends if you want to offset outside or inside. In this case, we want to offset inside, and that's a 0.4 millimeter, and then we'll get something like this. And that's really thin. Uh, let me offset a little bit bigger, like 0.8 millimeter, and then we'll get something like that. The only thing is, whenever you're coming into really point here, it seems all right over there, but you need to. Um, double make sure whenever coming into the point that might have uh, overlapping over there. So be really careful if that if that one has uh, open edges there. So that is method one. The second way to do is we can cap it the whole thing because the bottom is flat, right? And then we want to use the shell command, shell command on the shell. That's funny. but. Anyway, so 0.5 millimeter, for example, and we want to click on this surface. And then let's click OK. And it will create a shell all the way around. Double make sure if it's any part is broken. So that is the second way to do it. The third way to do it is we can actually, if uh, offset doesn't work for you, we can actually making a copy by scale this guy down and making a copy and release it. So now you have one on the outside, one on the inside. And if you look at this, um, you're going to have this one and this one, they need to be aligned. So we want to align to the zero point. So now we have something like this. And then we can simply just draw a really big panel, cover the entire area. And then we wanted the outside show to trim this panel and we want an inside shell to trim and it's hard to see so we can use the wireframe we want to, to trim this part inside so now in my perspective you can see i got three parts all you need to do is join them together right so there are three different way to actually make the things into the hollow form but it's solid so you can print Okay, now the very decorative part is our rope on each of them, right? So this is what I like to do. Um, we are going to measure, I mean, did it this one. We need to know the length for all of them first and create the exactly the same length on the side. So let's do this length. And measure the first one here. It is 20.7 millimeter. So we're going to copy that. Coming into the top view, I'm going to draw a line. And this is exactly the same length. And we're going to leave it there. So that's you. let's go ahead to do the second one. Again, we're going to use the length. And I'm going to measure this one. 
and this 25.44. So I'm going to come in my tab view to draw my second line right here with exactly the same length. All right, so I'm going to do the rest and fast forward for the same command. All right, so now we have all of this right here. Let me just align them to the left. And we're going to do the decoration there. I would like to pick up the longest one uh, as a trial. So I'm going to come in over here. For this point right here, let's go ahead to creating a circle, snapping to this point for whatever size that you think is appropriate. And then I'm going to making a copy and let's go ahead to trimming each other right in the middle and join them. I also want them to be nicer looking on the render. So I wanted to fill it the corner. So let's try point two, maybe too small. I want to try point four. So then we get this round things. And for both of them, I want them to be aligned right in the center. So it's easier for us to do um, the design. Okay, so with this one, that's my turning into the solid by extrude with the curve and we want to snapping into the end point. So let's go ahead to twist it. We want to twist this guy and snapping from this end point to the end point and coming into the right view and depends on how many turn you want, three and four and see if that is what you like. All right, and then so if not, you might wanna try a few more time. Okay, so how are we going to apply? I mean, moving this back to here so it's easier for you to see. How are we going to apply this guy to the surface? We're going to use the command for flow along curve and this piece is going to flow and this is the base curve and this guy is the target curve and we'll get something like this. All right, and see if the proportion is everything that you like, and if you don't, you might wanna flow again. All right, so let's move on to the next one. How are we gonna make it almost, uh, how are we going to make the size accordingly because this is getting smaller. If you have this fat one, coming over here, it's going to be too fat over there. Um, unless this is the design that you like to have consistent in all, this, all the way the same, I actually like to, them to gradually change to the smaller one, right? So that's why we need all this curve here. So I'm going to make a copy from the endpoint to all of them because all of them need to somehow custom a little bit. All right, so we're gonna starting with the one on the bottom and then once we're done, we can hide it so it's not bothering us. Like this one, I'm just going to hide it. All right, so for this one, it's going to flow to the bottom. So we are going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to flow. Let's flow this one. Hit enter and the base curve is here. Before we click on the target, make sure you record a history and then you wanna click on the target. So double make sure if that look okay to you. And you kind of see this stick it out is because it's stick it out from our uh, extra length. So that's okay. Uh, don't worry about that. And if you like the size, in my case, I think they are look okay. So we're going to move on to the next one. So that's hiding this one and do this one. Again, we are going to use the flow and this is the base and click on record history and click on target. As you can see, it's kind of very fat over there. So because we record a history that we can do is to 3D scale and snapping from here and kind of move it down. And sometimes you can scale it down all the way to that straight line there, but that line there is just giving you a reference. So I want to get them a little bit smaller and just kind of visually to check if they are okay. All right, so if that is okay, we're going to hide in this one and we're gonna flow again. So I'm going to fast forward from here.
All right, so now we got this there. Uh, we need to trim all the extra, so we're gonna coming into the top view. On the top view, I'm going to draw a box. Look like something pretty big that can cover the entire things over here. And we basically just go into bowling difference and difference out by this block. And that's how we get this rope decoration on this shape. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to Jury Cat Design, I have a perfect recommendation for you for my Jury Cat Master Class. Not only I teach you from beginning to intermediate level, I also answer students' questions weekly myself. So I can help the student learn fast without searching online forever to find a solution. Check out my course at pjchandesign.com. Hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.